All right, here it is at 2,000% of original size. Um, there's the different hole sizes that we put in there. All right, so this video is gonna be a Fusion 360 small tutorial, but it's on a real product. This is a product called the Urinal Catch that I've been working on for about the last nine months. And this is designed to uh, adhere to the backside of a urinal to completely reduce splashback. So the idea is you would aim um, directly, you would aim the urine stream directly at this and it would completely eliminate any splash pack. And it's got channels that the, um, you know, fresh water can run down the side, the backside for kind of a self cleaning feature, um, as well as some different um, adhesive options that we've been working on and testing and things of that nature. Now, this is eventually going to be injection molded with a scented. Um, EVA co-polymer, so the uh, the pellets that would feed the injection molding machine would be tumbled in a fragrance uh, and then pressed in you know the injection molder. So th this product uh, is largely done, or at least uh, the molding process is what we're going through right now. And right now it's a complex three part mold because of some of these undercut features at the bottom here, these kind of you know features along the bottom. Uh, we're trying to reduce the complexity of that to get down to a two piece mold to save a bunch of costs and time and everything um, on the manufacturing side of things. But while going down that avenue and, and trying to sell to different distributors and different um, end customers and even working with the existing suppliers slash competitors in that space, I've realized that there could be potential for um, another variant of just a traditional urinal screen. Now, those are uh, created and manufactured the exact same way, which I'll show a video of, which is just injection molded. And the ones that I'm showing you probably aren't scented, but a lot of them are as I mentioned, the EVA copolymer pellets are tumbled for about a day or so um, in a big kind of like con concrete tumbler and then fed into the hopper of the injection molding machine. But in this tutorial and in this application, I'm going to show you how really this whole process has led me down the path of working on my own CAD skills and getting back into 3D printing. And so it's been a, f a fun ride and <laughs> definitely a whirlwind, just kind of getting back up to speed on a lot of those and learning Fusion 360 to at least a beginner level. Let's go ahead and dive into Fusion 360. I'm going to show you how I'm iterating on the next mesh. So for this is, as I mentioned, the urinal catch invention, I want to create a more flat um, urinal screen innovation. And so that has a similar mesh, which is, you know, tessellated or, or repeated on the front side of it um, for kind of fingers extending up. And I'll show you a graphic of that. But that's really what we're laying out is that mesh type of pattern and what I wanted to 3D print in order to begin testing and to see kind of, you know, what size of um, fingers, if you will, will work. Um, and do some kind of different things on, on that front. Let's go ahead and jump in and we'll get started in the tutorial. All right, so what you're seeing here is actually me pulling the original design off of the 3D printer and the smallest one in the back there was the 100% of the file, which you'll see in Bamboo Studio shortly, but then I scaled it to 200 and 300%. So after I imported it as an STL into Bamboo Studio, <laughs> I could quickly tell that, man, my dimensions were way off. Um, you know, I can't even get a decent evaluation of that that you know design because it's just so small and it's so granular that the 3d printer can't really achieve that level of um, you know accuracy or at least on the fdm style of printing so after that um, that's what kind of spurred this redesign which you're going to see in in fusion and we're going to go through um, but then here is the bamboo studio layout of how those parts looked on the build plate just to give you some size reference. This is how it was actually laid out in Bamboo Studio. As I mentioned, when I imported this uh, S original STL, oops, sorry, um, the back one here is literally tiny. Uh, and I just knew from past experience that this was gonna be pretty difficult to see. And after I click slice, that's really when I um, was able to see that. So if you see all this white, the gap infill, I knew that'd come out really stringy and basically impossible to see. So I did add the brim. Uh, which is under others on the left menu over here. And I just did the outer brim only. And then the brim object gap I lowered. It's originally set to 0.1, but I dropped it to 0.05. And I've just seen that this, uh, it's a little bit harder to get the brim. In this case, I don't really care about getting the brim off. Um, you know, I can, I can deburr the edges or whatever, but the 
point one um, just doesn't give it as much adherence. So if I drop this down, then the gap to the part between the brim and the part is lesser, and it provides more bed adhesion uh, for the part. So I just quickly scaled these. I'll go back. This is just a 200% scaling. You can see that here of the original part, and this is a 300% um, scaling. Um, I accidentally hit that. So that was a 300% scaling of the part. And that's how that turned out in the clip. So I just wanted you to see that. And this is just printed on a 0.2 millimeter standard uh, layer height on generic PLA. I don't want to do any of that. But the time lapse came out really poor. But there you go. You can see the original settings, how I printed that, and the slicing, and how long that took, 22 minutes. When we're looking at this overall mesh, we need to start with one singular shape. Now the first shape that I created, or the first sketch that I created, was just something to lay this overall design down on. Um, so let me step this forward. And I just drew one large circle, and I think I just estimated this because the eventual urinal screen will be a circular shape of some sort, or some sort of you know um, elongated type of ovular shape. Uh, but I just set this as a sample swatch, 40 millimeters. So you know most people can or at least measure what 40 millimeters is, but this is just a 40 millimeter diameter circle that I was going to build everything on. Uh, my next shape that I drew was the triangle, which is the cross section of the cone. And then I'm going to then use the revolve tool to go ahead and create this, or uh, make this into an actual body, which I just showed that step right there, but we'll go into more detail. So something that you run into when you're doing designs like this is You'll, you'll make the design based on your best uh, your best guess of you know what measurements you'd like and that you think will work. You'll go ahead and 3D print it. You'll quickly realize that probably one of the dimensions was incorrect. And so you'll need to go back and change it. Well, in this case, we're going to really change only a few variables, which will probably be the overall cone height, um, right? Which you like, if you think about it as the height coming off of the base of the product. And then the overall cone, the, the width of the base, which is really the diameter of the bottom circle uh, portion of the cone. And then potentially the angle, um, and you can get, I guess, the base, to, to further talk about this base dimension right here, you can generate that by either setting the angle at which the long edge of the triangle is, um, is to this I guess Z limit up here, um, you can set that, or you can just manually set the overall length and then that'll determine the angle that this is. So to demonstrate how messy this gets when you originally design it, now I'm still learning how to really set parameters and use variables to be able to make this super easy when I go back and modify things. And I've just started to utilize the under modify, the change parameters. And I haven't done it in this model, but um, that is very powerful when you start to get into, you know, designs you need to change a lot of dimensions once you print it, and you are gonna want to make a lot of changes because then you can quickly do that using the parameters. But for right now, I literally you can see how messy this is. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, delete these, delete these, delete this, and then we want to set this sketch dimension. So I click sketch dimension, set it nine or whatever. I want 11. Uh, we'll leave it at 10 because that'll change some features down the road that I don't want to change yet. So we'll leave it at 10 for now. Um, and then I actually want to get rid of this because I think I want to not determine the length of this side because I want this flat. So I don't want this angle to make this a driven dimension. So let's see if we can go down here. Let's take this point. And square it up and then let's go ahead and see if we can fix this actually let's set this this will be two millimeters and we can just do it that way so that's that might be the easiest just to avoid um, this bottom portion kind of getting all out of whack now, if you wanted to utilize sketch dimension for this angle, you're gonna highlight the long end of the triangle and this overall point. Then you can actually choose a degree for the angle. So let's say I want it 88, which should 
make my small side a lot shorter, but it'll probably, yep. It's gonna keep that, that two millimeter dimension that we set, um, and so in order to achieve that 88 degree, it's gonna totally mess that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that, and actually I don't want that, so I don't want that at all. But now, what we have is a figure then we can come back and modify once we see it in real life and actually print it, and it's very simplified, and it's not messy anymore in the sketch. So that's gonna save you a lot of time, and man, I literally have designs where I don't even wanna edit them or like go back and make them more perfect, if that makes sense, because when I was sketching, it was just such a mess that I don't even know how to clean them up at this point, because everything is either you know driven or constrained and I don't really even know the, the full terminologies and usages of that, but that's what you run into once you start doing a lot of designs is you you hit that wall of needing to design from the first sketch um, a very clean and elegant or at least a lot more organized um, sketch you know profile for all these different shapes. So let's see what that did. So then we use the revolve tool and all I did was create, go over here to revolve and then boom. I chose the axis, which in this case would be the Z axis, and then that's what it creates. So you can mess with this. Um, you can do both sides if you wanted, um, and then you can mess with, you know, typical join, cut, intersect, things of that nature. So I already did that, so I'm just gonna go advance my timeline. Now, this is a lot stubbier, if you will, of a cone design than my, or the design that we started with, I guess, originally. So let's just step through this and see See, these are going to be overlapping a lot more, as I mentioned, because it's a lot more stubby. So you can see, you can't even see the hole um, in that. And if we take this all the way, if the, take the timeline all the way out. Yeah, so it definitely messes up um, a few things. So first off, let's get rid of the chamfers. So the chamfers are just to clean up the edges of the base when I finished it. And actually, I chamfered the tops of these cones because we're using a cut feature. And let me get rid of this sketch real quick. There you go, so we can actually see it. So now let's go back to, and I want to, hold on. So the way that we're cutting off the tops of those cones to make them more stubby, so we get better resolution on the print because we just chamfer the tops of those as opposed to them coming to a, a, you know, a hard point. And that'd be very difficult for the printer to achieve. So what we did, so I did my construction plane up top, and then I just made another circle up here. There it is. And then I extruded that downward. So, nope, that's the extrude that cuts the holes. Let me see, I think it's this one. Yeah, so this is the um, shape and that circle's way too big obviously you don't need it that large but I just did it to mimic the lower sketch um, that guy at least a little bit better but I then extruded this downwards which cuts off the tops of these so let's go ahead and let's get rid of this extrude for now because we want to play with the heights of our cones Okay, so now the sharp points come back because we're not cutting them, obviously. Um, and actually the base of our cones now overlap the uh, little base that I put here for us to print these on. So let's go back to what we just did and change this. I wanna change this to 0.5. So this will make our clones very skinny now, or at least it should. But let's make them taller. Let's take them to 15 millimeters a piece. So now we can mess with our dimensions very quickly and iterate our design much, much faster. And I'll actually go ahead and get rid of the sketch and hide the construction plane that's up here that helped us draw that. And look at that. So very tall, very skinny. Um, and that actually messed up our whole feature or the holes that we created, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and totally get rid of this. So let's get rid of the base. I'm sorry, let's get rid of these holes as well. Just get rid of all that. So now we're just left with, before we even add holes, so if we wanted to, you know, if you work through these as 
one step at a time. Right now, we're literally just trying to identify the cone size, the finger size, um, to see what can print in real life. And now that last print, you'll see, came out super, super small. And the only time that it was able to really be um, worked with was at 200% of the original size. So if I'm just going off that, I actually need to bump the 10 um, the straight edge of the, of the triangle, excuse me. We probably need to bump this up even more um, and take it up even more proportionally. So because of how small the original or this first test print was. So let's go back to our shape here. And I know this is going to mess up my rectangular pattern. So the rectangular pattern function or step is where I kind of defined how far out I want each of these to be um, away from each other. So since I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger, I'm going to take this out to four millimeters in either direction for the spacing. And let's try that. So let's leave that there. Something didn't work. Maybe it's my base here. Let's make this bigger and see if it's able to populate those. Yeah, sure enough. Okay. So it just wasn't showing those because of the sketch. And there's another random sketch of one of those original circles. So we got rid of that. And let me go back to this, make it a little bit smaller. And boom. So that this base is just a tentative base, obviously, while we're sizing these and just seeing how they could be. So now let's go ahead and make the edits to the original triangle that's driving the cone shape. Back to this sketch, back to edit sketch, side profile. Okay, let's take this up to, um, so if it was at roughly 10 and I doubled it to 200%, it would be at 20, and that's really when I started to see it. So let's do, I think 22 would be good, and that would, let's take this to like, f uh, let's do two millimeters. Uh, maybe 1.5 just to keep it. Uh, we'll do two. I think that'll work. So finish. So we definitely have a lot of overlapping, but what we'll do is we'll just go. I like the dimensions of the cone that that's creating, so we'll got to take our spacing out. So my idea here was I want slight, uh, really no overlap, but just right there would be perfect. So let me take this back on this front. Perfect. So 8 by 8 Let's see how that did. And once again, we're running into some issues with that base. So let me. I don't want to delete that because I think that the rectangular pattern is somehow tied to that. Okay. Now, here's another thing we can do. Let's practice our sketch dimension. Let's set this 12. And let's do the same thing to this side, and let's do 12. And now, it's going to be a little tricky with the placement. But I want to set this to, let's see if it'll let us move this thing. We'll hug that edge, and we'll see what that does. Let's make this 13 by 13. 13, 13, boom, 13. Now I'm not exactly sure, see it's a perfect example, I'm not exactly sure how I would lock one of the sides to a certain point um, or to an edge. That's something I'm still learning. So if you know how to do that, please drop a comment. But I'm still a little bit off. Just make this easy. Pull this out a little bit. Okay, now I think I have all our cones on one shape. So these are just touching a little bit. The base is a little off, but whatever, not a huge deal. But now, let's go take the 
tops off of these to make them easier to print, a little bit flatter. So where's our existing construction plane? So our construction plane right now was set to the above the original top. You can still see it in yellow right here very faintly. But let me go to the step in the timeline for construction plane. And let me take it up. So it's set to 10. Let's go to 23, which is a few millimeters above the tops of these guys. Let's do that. And then let's make a sketch on that construction plane. Turn it back on. And let's just do a circle. And let's go above these so we can see where the middle is. Roughly there. Not a huge deal because this is going to be overlapping. Set that 25 just so it covers all of them. Finish sketch. Now, the fun part. Extrude. I just hit E on the keyboard. Now I'm going to drop this down. So see, it's set to the cut operation, so it's going to cut these down. Now let's cut them down to... Uh, let's do 8. That looks pretty good. Now I'll turn off my plane so we can see the modification. And just to pretty these up a little bit, let's go ahead and chamfer the tops of these bad boys. Okay. And we'll just do this pretty small. So let's see how... Ooh, this is... There's point 0.1, there's point 0.2. Yeah, even 1 is way too big. So 0.5, 6... Probably tap out it. Yeah, so 0.7 is where it stops. So uh, we'll go to 0.6. That gives it kind of just a nice blunt tip. All right. And the base isn't perfect, uh, but I feel pretty happy with this. And I think this could be a good evaluation of the mesh um, that would eventually make up the overall urinal screen. So, all right. In my original recording of this, I realized that the little pop-up windows on Fusion 360 were not showing in my screen recording. So that's super fun. I hope, I don't think it really changed any of the understanding, but the last step is to go ahead and go up to file, click this nice 3D print option, go ahead and select the, the body. It'll give you the format and I choose STL and binary. You assign a unit type because STLs inherently don't have any sort of, you know, a legend or, or size reference. So you can either choose millimeter, metric, uh, meter, foot, whatever you want. Uh, inches, uh, preview mesh. If you want to save some computing powder, you, uh, power, you can just uncheck that. Refinement. I always do high and then output. Sometimes this will be this radio box for send to 3D print utility will be checked. I uncheck that. That gives me the OK button. Um, activates the OK box down here, and I click OK. I save it as whatever file type I want, mesh tester 2, whatever, STL, click save. So let's jump into Bamboo Studio now and see just how big this ended up being. All right, so now that we have the .stl file exported from Fusion 360, let's go ahead and just do a new project in Bamboo Studio. We'll get this sliced up real quick. Wanna go ahead and import. All right, there's the new file inserted. So actually feeling a lot better about that one. And let me see if I can pull in the original one just to give us a comparison of how much we actually changed the sizing. The original, you can see just how much smaller that one was. So even at 200% of its original, it's going to be roughly the same size, I mean, height-wise, as our newly designed uh, model out of Fusion. But the best part is we don't have to modify it in Bamboo Studio. <laughs> we actually have the proper file and the proper dimensions that we can then set to exactly what we're going to want uh, prior to prior, or you know post printing. So let's go ahead and get the get rid of the original. Let me move this over to where the camera so we can do a nice little time lapse. Let's slice this puppy up. 16 minutes in print. I'm going to go ahead and add a brim just so it doesn't... Um, I think it's crazy on us. Drop this back down to 0.05, generic PLA. Let's go ahead and slice that. And print plate. And here's how that part came out. So it's size-wise almost exactly the 200% of the original, um, but that's just how it compares to the, the three there. But came out really nice. And I actually like the size of the base cone. Um, and there's compared to the big guy, obviously. But all right, now we have the core mesh. So now that we have kind of the boring mesh work done, let's go ahead and just make this into a, you know, something resembling a urinal screen, at least roughly. 
that uh, we can print in some TPU, some flexible material, and actually, you know, try this out and see how it interacts with a uh, urine stream or simulated urine stream. <laughs> no real pee uh, is used in the making of these videos, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, here it is in all its TPU glory. Get it centered there. And still some strain, but you can see pretty good detail in the holes in the bottom there. And on the actual bottom face. A little bit better. So, really good durability as well. It's holding together. Stringing, we could slow things down, but. There you have it. All right, so it's a new day, and my enthusiasm for Fusion 360 has returned, or refreshed at least. I actually tackled another design sesh for the overall design, which yielded this, which is actually a pretty decent-looking um, urinal screen-esque shape and design and actual you know, form factor. But oftentimes in Fusion 360, I find myself redesigning everything from scratch. And after a lot of the steps you saw in the first design session that we did, don't translate to my final design session because I'll think of different ways to do things or streamline ways to achieve the same outcome um, and do things faster, more efficiently. So a lot of the steps really kind of not worth it. I mean, for example, the way that I took off the tops of the cones in the first session, I ended up just the shape, the conical shape that we ended up making in the final session was just added a, a flat top as opposed to having to cut into that, uh, you know, pointed cone shape. So little things like that will, you'll become more efficient at over time. And I find myself, like I said, literally redesigning a lot of products and a lot of, you know, things that I make a few times over until I have the most efficient way of doing them, which it's kind of like beating your head against a wall, but that's kind of cat in itself. So if you're a beginner like me, that's something you'll run into quite a bit. All right. So back in fusion. So literally just started over. I told you I made this, the cone shape uh, flat on the top in order to avoid cutting into the shape in the final chamfered the top and the single object. So then that way, when we duplicate it, I don't have to click the top of that to chamfer it 700 times. Like you saw my other, a uh, little demo there, but man, this, when we were creating this, you know, repeating design, it was just crushing my hardware. So I was waiting quite a, a while for just my CPU and my GPU to process all these translations um, and all these different combinations and cuts and whatnot. It also took me a while to understand that if you would like to do the intersection of two circles, they need to be on the same sketch as opposed to two different sketches because I wanted to cut off that outer lip of the cones away from the circle. But for some reason, it just, I could not get it until I put the two circles on the same sketch step. And then that allowed me to choose the overlap of the circles, as you can see there. So that's the way to do that. But these ended up being a little bit long, but you can see I just was playing around quite a bit with all this and trying a bunch of different stuff.
So you can see, be careful though, as I mentioned, with the hardware needs for something like this when you're duplicating and modifying and computing a lot of shapes, because it can just hammer your computer. And you can actually, now that I am remembering, I did have to restart Fusion quite a few times. And this is like my third or fourth attempt because I wasn't saving <laughs> as I was going along. So just save your file so then if it does crash on one of the compute steps, you won't lose all your work. All right, if you're still with us, I want to say thank you. We made everything from the scaled up version of the original design all the way to what kind of our final product will look like. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. If you have any other better ways to do things, best practices, please drop them in the comments below. I would love to improve and hopefully help the uh, entire audience. So thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.